So I want you to think about what's the number one thing that thriving successful artists know. They know, they absolutely know deep down, they're painting why. How they define success for themselves as artists. So I've seen four key areas, like I said, that motivate artists to create. They've, the first one is pleasure. Then there's innovation, recognition, and profit. Like I said, the four can overlap, but it's the artists who manage to combine the four together in a balanced way who have the most success in art and in life. That first key category in the area is pleasure. Artists who are motivated by pleasure, and most artists start here, they're creating from a place of enjoyment, of fun, of entertainment, and just pure pleasure. Many of the artists in this category describe themselves as hobbyists, but don't let that fool you. Painting for pleasure doesn't mean a lack of skill, quite the contrary. Many of these artists are quite skilled and spend a great deal of time on developing those talents, a great deal of time in their, their spare time in painting. Artists who paint for pleasure often work and are able to work when the mood strikes them and they enjoy the relaxing meditative process of painting, that side effect from painting, that flow state. The main challenges that they face, and see if you recognize any of these, range from a lack of their own creative workspace to frustration with a lack of skills to not being able to carve out enough dedicate, dedicated time to create. Connecting with other artists and community can really benefit their skill development and belief in their identity as artists, and also just simply the pure pleasure in the act of painting. The second category, the second type of motivation for artists is innovation. These artists are motivated by a desire to innovate. They value creative exploration and artistic excellence. Their painting practice is way more directed towards developing their own unique approach and their voice, regardless of how marketable their work actually is. Many of these artists pursue opportunities to share their work through nonprofit venues, places like museums, nonprofit galleries, and residency programs. They frequently just are not interested in selling their paintings. And they're happy in taking on outside jobs, other ways to create an income that give them the ability to pursue painting whatever it is that they want. Then the third area, the third big why that I've noticed is recognition. Sometimes this one gets a bad rap and I want you to hold any judgment that you might have about this and think about it for a minute. For an artist who's motivated by recognition, their top priority is communicating and sharing their work with a, an audience of raving fans. They're interested, quite frankly, in fame and there's nothing wrong with that. Awards and competitive exhibitions, particularly professional ones um, in, at the national and regional level, feed their creative energy. But most important is that feedback loop. It's not just about getting the blue ribbons. It's about having that direct line of communication with a highly engaged audience. Success comes in the form for these folks of fame and recognition rather than profit. Which brings me to that last category I mentioned, profit. Artists who are motivated by profit, they're not just painting for money. In fact, that's not what we're talking about. When an artist is motivated by profit, these are the artists who feel most aligned to their motivation when they're able to achieve financial security by selling their work. The sale of their work, bringing them financial stability is what floats their boat. For them, that alignment happens when they focus on creating paintings that will appeal 
to their target audience. They're creative, not only in their artwork, but in how they market and share and sell their artwork, but how they get in front of potential buyers and facilitate those sales. Those sales can come in a whole range of different places, the more traditional ones like art fairs, festivals, gallery representation, or the new venues that have opened up as we've become a more digital world. The online marketplaces and individual websites where artists share their work with their followers, with their devoted followers and fans. Ultimately, you're the only one that can decide. You're the only one who gets to define what success is for you. And any combination of those four things, those four areas that work for you. Very few people are gonna pick just one or are motivated by just one. They have little bits of each of the others in there as well. Let's run through those one more time. Painting for pure pleasure, painting for innovation, artistic excellence painting for recognition, and painting for profit. Remember, you get to choose. And that achieving success in any of these four paths is within your reach. It just takes some time and effort. If you would like to learn a little bit more about some of these, I'm going to be hosting a special um, series of live workshops next week. We'll be sharing the link to those here in the, the caption up above as soon as we hop off. But I wanted to give y'all a heads up. If you're on my email list, you're going to be getting an email with a link to that webinar registration in the morning. Hope to see you there. And I hope this has been helpful for you in figuring out what your area what your motivation is as you create your own thriving success path. I would love to hear which one of these resonated for you. So you can feel free to share those down below and I'll hop in here too and answer some questions. I see questions coming in. Hey, Gabrielle and Tony, let me see if I can get all of these to show up sometimes. Facebook hides those. Let's just see if we've still got them all here. Ah, awesome, Tony. So I will absolutely pop that into an email for you. Gabrielle, validation. I think people get validation from any of those four areas. So validation is very much a part of thriving as an artist. Validation is that feedback loop that says, yes, you've achieved what you've been trying to achieve. And what you're trying to achieve is gonna depend on which one of those motivators is the main driver for you. So if the main driver is pleasure, then the validation of that is gonna be when you are entertained, when you are excited, when you are enjoying the act of painting. That's the validation for that area. This is such a good question. Innovation, artistic excellence, the validation there might come in the form of feedback that you would get from a curator, a museum director, or a trusted mentor. It might come from sharing your work in nonprofit venues like a museum. So you might get an artist residency where you get to have a paid time um, at a retreat to work on a new body of work. And the only limitation there is what you put on yourself. So residencies are fantastic for people who are motivated by innovation. Recognition, the validation there comes from achieving those awards, from having that highly engaged audience that's giving you that feedback loop of um, recognition, of awareness of the, the reach that you have attained. 
So the validation for somebody who's after recognition comes in the form of awards, really, in ex competitive exhibitions. It comes in the form of your reach, how big and broad your audience is. The validation for someone who's motivated to paint for profit is in their ability to be able to support themselves through the sale of their work so that they can keep self-funding their own path to success. So I hope that makes sense. That was a really fantastic question there. Yes, Gabrielle says, painting keeps me sane. Dollars and fame are a bonus. I think that's, that's true for a lot of people and that's a perfectly reasonable approach to take. I think it's people do artists a disservice when they tell them that any one of those four is not valid, that any one of those four is not a, a, a proper pursuit for artists to take. I get just as angry and annoyed by people tearing down artists who want to sell their work as I do by the people who tell artists that if they want recognition, that they're just after fame and fortune. So it, all of those are perfectly valid pursuits. And I really do think it's important to do a little self-analysis and think about which one is the most important for you. If you really don't care at all about achieving um, recognition for your innovations, for profit, or any of those things, then painting just for pleasure is a perfectly fine thing to do. There are lots of artists who are highly skilled who do just that. So yeah, awareness of the reach can be really, really rewarding. If you know that you're having an impact on, I'm gonna make up a big old honking big number, on a half a million people as an artist, that could be extraordinarily exciting because art changes lives. It's not just about the money. When people look at art, they have physical changes. It affects their health. It can affect their mental health. It can affect their well being. It can affect the way they feel about their homes. It can affect the way that other people perceive them because other people can get new insight into who that person is by the artwork that they pick out. So art impacts people's worlds in all kinds of ways. So, excellent. Hey, Casey, it's good to see you. I am struggling to try and make it let me see all of the comments. Because once again, let's see if I can mute the sound here. Um, there we go. Now I got them all. Let me get up to the very tip top here. Hey, Jane Wright Wolf, it's good to see you. And Angela Gunter, awesome. And Cheryl. John, John says he painted the Mona Lisa once, and by the time he got done, she looked more like Charlie Brown. But I bet you had a darn good time doing it, John. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. Hey, Barbara, it's good to see you and Sharon. And let's see if I miss. Oh, we got another Barbara here, Barbara Roslett. And Tony McGraw, Gabrielle Barber. And oh, rock and art, Wendy Folly. Good to see you. Wendy says, I like feedback, but painting is therapy, therapy for me. I have a stressful job, and selling is just a super bonus. I think that's awesome. When you know exactly what it is that you're after, Wendy, and you know that painting makes you feel better, that's your motivator. And it, just like you say, all of those other things, recognition, reach, innovation, profit, those are icing on the cake. And that is a perfectly valid path to go down. Absolutely valid path. Um, Sharon, I will double check to make sure that you're on the email list. Hey, Steinan, it's good to see you. So glad to have you here. And hey, Chris, it's good to have you as well. Melanie, how are you? Yes, I kind of let the cat out of the bag get there. Yes, podcast. Yes, 
We are launching the live podcast soon, and it is kicking off with episodes from the show here on Facebook. So yes, it is. Hey, Beth Williams. Yeah, Beth says over the years, you can have all of these motivators. Absolutely. Some people start with just painting for pleasure and they're doing it for fun. One of my favorite places, um, one of my favorite places that people start at, and I haven't actually done it, so I'm not sure why I called it my favorite place, other than I, I really think this is a fantastic place and I've seen lots of artists get their start here. Those old wine and sips, people laugh about them and I've gotten some flack for saying, encouraging people to go to them, but there's something about the wine and paint combination where the pressure is off and people know what it is they're gonna paint. They get told what colors to use and it gets them hook, hooked on the creative process. I can't tell you how many painting students I've gotten who go on to be motivated to paint for profit, who get started painting for pleasure at their local wine and sip and paint. Nothing wrong with that at all. So yeah, I think a lot of people get started with painting. It's just something to do that they find entertaining that is relaxing. And then they get intrigued by some of those other motivators along the way. And your motivation can go all the way around the circle during the course of your lifetime. It's not gonna stay in the same place, definitely. Hey Ruben, it's good to see you. Yeah, I really am, I think it's important for people to know that all of those are options and all are equally valid. And you can curate the combination, the proportions of each one that are important to you. And nobody else gets to talk about that and tell you what you gotta do. Don't let other people boss you on that. Um, let's see. Hey, Robin, it's good to see you. Yeah, Melanie, the weather is stinky right now. I'm afraid we sent a little blow and, and drizzle up your way. It was here yesterday. Sorry about that. Bertha is off our coast. I think actually Bertha has moved inland at this point. Juanita says, I can never finish a painting. It gets set aside. Well, Juanita, you might want to think about whether finishing the painting is that important to you. It may just be the act of painting itself that you find soothing and finishing it is just not that important. Or it could be that other things that get, you know, other things are getting in the way. And if there are other things that are getting in the way, well, there's some, some things you can do to rectify that. But think about it for a little while and decide whether finishing those paintings is something you even care about. Um, if you do care about it, I'll be back. We'll come up with some follow-up on that. Yeah, Melanie, I am interested in seeing you send your work out into the world as well. And I think that from watching you work over the last year and a half, almost year and a half, but the last year, I've seen you move through almost all of those stages. And I think that there's, there's a level uh, or a balance between the innovation and the recognition and the profit that you're just gonna have to figure out which percentage is most important to you so that you can carve your path, plot your path out. And Gabrielle says, what about flopping from one medium to the next? No brand, love doing it all. If you're having fun moving from one medium to another, go for it. Depends on what your motivator is. If pleasure is your main motivator, there's nothing wrong with exploring all of the different options that are out there. If you want to paint for any of those other three, then it's gonna be helpful to narrow down for a little while. Doesn't mean you have to give the others up, but you do wanna develop a primary focus there. Hey, Ivanya, it's good to see you. Yeah, I agree, Melanie. I have no patience with that form of hate. I go harumph all the time when I hear it. 
and oh, Wendy, this is, I think, an important point too. Wendy says, I love painting with a group and seeing everyone's take on the subject. Remember I said community is really important for artists and there are an awful lot of different ways that you can get community. You may prefer painting by yourself, but sharing your work with a community of artists who are also pursuing the same things, same kind of motivations. So finding that community that's gonna be supportive while you're working is super important. And yeah, Melanie says, same folks dissed Bob Ross. I know, they did. And while I'm not super fond of a lot of Bob Ross's paintings, I'm super fond of Bob Ross. I think he was fantastic because as you're pointing out, he did the same thing for people that the sip and paints did. He got people to realize that they could be creative and they could paint and that it wasn't intimidating to pick up a brush and make a happy painting. So I think that people like Bob Ross, programs like the Sip and Paint are fantastic ways for people to unlock their creativity. Let's see, oh, got a bunch more comments here. Yeah, Bertha did make landfall. Yeah, Gabrielle says, says wine and paint are the feeder things. They get me hooked and then they go, people go look for art classes, that's true. I, a lot of people get hooked on painting that way because partially because they've absorbed that story from the past where people told them, you're not an artist, you can't paint, you're not any good, you didn't go to art school. And then they get inhibited in painting. When the truth is, anybody can learn to paint and you don't have to do it in art school. There are all kinds of other ways to learn to paint. So. The, the wine or in the atmosphere of painting with a group helps people to feel less intimidation. Yeah, oh, Juanita says I'm a, a perfectionist. That tends to be something that comes from our fear of failure and the precious, making the thing that we're working on too precious. So the thing, the easiest way to let go of perfectionism is to give yourself permission to fail, fail fast and fail often. So the assignment I give to students who are all caught in that perfectionist mode is to go make a bad painting. You have to go make a bad painting. And if you're in the Artwork Living Facebook group, the free group, I want you to go over and share that bad painting and tell people I told you to do it. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not gonna be able to make a bad painting. Because as soon as you try to lock yourself into making a bad one, it gets in your way of making a bad one. So make a series of 10 bad paintings and just telling yourself you're gonna make 10 bad ones will unlock your creativity and you, you can start painting and flow. And Denise says, I have a hard time putting together a body of work because I like abstract process, realism, oils, pastels. How do I choose which direction my body of work goes in? Well, what makes a body of work can be style, it can be subject, it can be theme, it can be medium, it can be size. All of those things will contribute to that sense that it's a series or a cohesive body of work. The thing that's gonna help you the most in creating that, because you can do it in a whole variety of mediums, is to paint often, to paint a little faster, and to paint consistently. So if you do those things, if you start painting more frequently, and you try to narrow down which mediums you're working in for a little while, that consistent body of work can't help but show up. It's like trying to create a style. That happens all by itself. You do not have to think and plan your style. Just paint. Paint your way towards it. But you gotta get off the fence and paint in order for that to happen. Yeah, Melanie's chiming in and saying, I don't know a single artist that does just one medium. I would agree with that. I work in a number of them. 
Angela says, I recently painted shrimp in watercolor versus oil and found the challenge anxiety provoking, challenging and very rewarding. Yet when you switch mediums, I call that cross training, it pulls you out of your normal patterns and gives you a little bit of a reset. It can be great for when you're feeling like you're stuck in a rut or you're not sure what to do next. So it's a great thing to do. Um, yeah, I agree, Melanie. I love Bob Ross's attitude. Happy trees. So Christy says, I'm a commissioned artist, primarily architecture and graphite, which I love, but sometimes I just want to play in colors. I always have to prioritize what I'm getting paid for. Don't know how to get paid for the speculative, colorful pieces. I know it's a good problem to have. I think what you do is that you schedule yourself some time every week to just work on those, what you're calling speculative pieces, the ones that I call explorations. And over time, they'll develop into a second line of work that you can share on something like social media um, or your website once you have enough of them that kind of hang together. But I wouldn't show them until you, they turn into your next body of work. But give yourself a, a block of time each week that's just there to experiment. It's calling to you, and if you ignore it, it's going to drive you crazy. Gabrielle says, tough right now, community. I know. I totally get that. I think all of us have suffered from not being able to get together physically with our family, our friends, and our art communities. And Zoom helps a lot. Zoom lets us get together in meetings and see each other's faces and laugh and hear each other talk. I'm having a happy hour with my oldest friends, my, my growing up friends, my kindergarten friends tomorrow evening. So we've been doing that all the way through this. There are all kinds of ways to still find community. One is, as you're saying, Gabrielle, to, to get together and to Zoom together, um, have a Zoom group of artists. You can paint together. You can just share your work and critique each other. That definitely helps. Figuring out if you are out of quarantine, how you can get together and with safe distancing involved so that you can still share. You just have to plot your way forward on that. And hey, Carol, it's good to see you. Christine Norby says, I'm over-motivated. <laughs> that cracks me up. I don't think you're over-motivated, Chris. I think that sometimes you're not sure which one of those areas is the one that you really want to chase after. So I would sit down and kind of think about which percentage of which one is more important to you, and that'll help. Yeah, Gabrielle says, most people decide by the time they're 10 if they're good enough, in air quotes, or not. That need to paint the photos gets in the way. I don't think it's just painting the photos. I think it's being told that you're supposed to paint the photo and it's supposed to look like the photo, or that if you can't do that, you're not any good. But yes, I would agree that most people by the time they're 10 have decided they're not creative and they can't paint, and it's actually totally not true. Yes. Failure is where learning begins. And Melanie's quoting me here, paint every day you eat. Absolutely. Do something towards your painting practice every single day and paint your way towards it. Hey, Janice Corbishley, it's good to see you. And hey, Michelle Moore. Gabrielle says, I find cross-training brings something to each medium. It totally does. I do a lot of monotypes and monotypes are one of a kind original prints. So you paint on the plexiglass and then run it through the press and you get a unique painting print that looks a lot like a watercolor or an oil painting on paper. And what I've done with that feeds my paintings and what I do with my paintings feeds my prints and so the cycle goes on. So just figuring out what that secondary medium is can be really, really, really helpful. So I've got to hop off. It's dinner time. I see Melanie's heading off for dinner. So as I said, I'm going to pop the link for our next The Rise of the Thriving Artist workshop coming up next week. 
here into the caption up above as soon as we log off. And if you're on my email list, keep an eagle eye on your email tomorrow because the link will be in there as well. Thank you all for joining me here this evening. Remember, stay resilient, wash your hands, and paint on, my friends. We can paint our way through almost anything together. Bye-bye for now.